Blank guns are reproductions of real firearms that do not shoot any type of bullet out of them and cannot chamber a real cartridge, so they are perfectly safe. Or maybe not. Welcome back to Bekia Ballistics. Today we have another gun accident related topic, injuries caused by blank guns. It may sound strange that a gun that doesn't expel any kind of bullet can still do damage, sometimes very serious, and soon you will discover that the same type of threat arises when using real revolvers. So let's explore the functioning of a blank gun in order to get an adequate understanding of what's happening. Here is a semi-automatic blank pistol, replicating the shape of a Beretta 92. The most substantial difference with a real gun is that it is specifically designed to avoid the possibility that the user may find a way of shooting any kind of harmful projectile out of it. This is generally done with these three expedients. First, the barrel is partially or totally obstructed. In this case, the obstruction is complete and the gas of the cartridge is vented from the top of the barrel through these two holes. Second, the barrel is structurally weak, combining the low thickness of the chamber and a low strength material, generally a die cast zinc alloy. The barrel is also generally cast in one piece with the frame, so to make it impractical to replace it with a structurally adequate one. As you can see from the magnet testing, most of the gun is actually made of the relatively weak zinc alloy. The barrel obstruction is one of the very few parts made out of steel. Finally, Blank guns are chambered in specifically designed cartridges that are only loaded for blank firing. This should not be confused with common cartridges loaded as blanks that share the same dimensions with the live rounds and are designed to be fired in real guns. Anyway, in this case the cartridge is the very common 9mm PAK, of which I think some aspects could be interesting, so I'm going to quickly show you its features. Here is a cutaway I made of a fired cartridge. The first interesting thing is the case is actually made out of steel and has quite thick walls. This doesn't surprise considering that it is designed to be used in very weak guns so the ability of the case to hold the pressure by itself is a desirable feature. You can also see that a regular small pistol primer is used and that the front end of the cartridge is closed with a pre-notched plastic insert that is designed to bleed out the gas when the cartridge is fired. As for the powder, it is smokeless, but as I showed in a previous video, regular smokeless propellants have a very hard time burning if they don't have enough confinement, which in real guns is due to the inertia of the bullet. So in a blank cartridge a very fast burning powder must be used, together with a choke of the gas flow, which is due to the narrow passage the gas has to go through to exit the case and the gun. In fact, even the plastic plug constriction is enough to get high pressure, as you can hear from this shot in which I loaded one of the blank cartridges in a real Glock 19 that of course had no barrel obstructions of any sort. Obviously the gun didn't cycle. Out of the cartridge I showed you, about 2 grains of flake powder came out and it doesn't surprise that at ambient pressure it burned faster than the fastest burning pistol powder I have. Smokeless powder producers actually call this type of propellant blank powder as it is specifically formulated for fast burning even with very little confinement. Aside from loading blank cartridges, this type of powder is used for loading very low weight loads, most notably less lethal shotgun loads, which I will cover in a following video. Going back to our gun, the functioning is pretty straightforward. When the primer of the cartridge is struck, the powder is ignited, the pressure rises and the gas exits from the slots cutting the plastic plug of the cartridge and goes in the barrel obstruction insert, from where it is vented out of the gun through a vent hole. If the hole is coaxial with the barrel, the gun is called front firing, while in our case, with the gas being blown upwards, we call it top firing. Meanwhile, the high pressure gas pushes on the slide that moves backwards as in a straight blowback action, cycling the next round. The relatively high number of blank gun related accidents are due to the fact that in our everyday life we think of gases and fluids in general as being unable to do damage to solids and in general that in order to scratch a particular material you need a harder tool. This is however only true for low velocity interactions and becomes less and less relevant as speed increases. To put it very simply, this is due to the fact that in order to get the soft material out of the way, you don't only have to apply the force needed to deform it, which in a soft material is quite low, but also to move it out of the way fast enough. 
In case of very high velocity, huge forces are needed to overcome the inertia, and contact forces much higher than the strength of the bullet are generated. This is the reason why a lead bullet with a soft copper jacket is able to dent or pierce a thick steel plate. If you tried that at low velocity, no matter how hard you pushed, you would only get a softer bullet to deform, not even scratching the steel surface. Have a look at this steel plate from a very old video from the Ballistician. There are three bullet impacts from the same gun, an 8mm Moser rifle, shot from the same distance. The one that went through was a soft point, while the other two were surplus FMJs. In high-speed impacts, density and velocity count more than the difference in strength between copper and lead. Probably the soft point bullet was just a little faster than the FMJs. Back to our study, fluids have no mechanical strength, but they have mass, so when hitting a target, a contact pressure will be generated, which increases with the square of the velocity. If the impact velocity is high enough, the contact pressure will exceed the target's strength and damage it. Our blank gun can do just this. The very fast stream of gas it shoots out of the vent holes can generate contact pressures high enough to damage many soft materials, including of course the human body. So shooting the blank gun with any part of the body in close proximity to it can result in injuries that, in case of little distance between the vent holes and the body parts, can be very serious. Of course, styrofoam is not the strongest material, but it clearly shows the path and shape of the vented jet. To show the effects against something a little more resistant, I got this expired juice brick and tested it against the blank pistol. The gas jet pierced it and blew it open spraying us with juice. No. And my colleague realized he was going to be sticky for the rest of the day. Anyway, there's another common gun system that produces potentially dangerous gas jets, and that's the revolver. From the gap between cylinder and barrel, very high pressure gas vents out, and the effects of it are pretty similar, as shown by the styrofoam experiment. Anyway, this is all I wanted to tell you. As usual, I encourage you to click the thumbs up or down button to help me understand which videos you like the most. Also, if you like my stuff, consider subscribing to the channel, it's free. See you next time, bye.